motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Hey, peace, beautiful people. Queen here with another episode. This is going to be a banger, one of my favorite things to talk about. Before we begin, let's take a divine deep breath. Mm. Always feels good to get in the present moment. All right, so we're talking about fasting <clears throat> and the health benefits of fasting. And I'm going to share a little bit of my own personal journey with fasting. When we look at the health benefits of fasting, what are some of the health benefits? Number one, better overall health. A uh, better brain cognition, a better quality of life, and a longevity of life. There are various forms of fasting, different types of fasting. You've got water fasting, there's fruit fasting, veggie fasting, green smoothies, intermittent fasting, and a lot more different types of fasting. I'm primarily going to be talking about in this episode water fasting and intermittent fasting. So let me share with you a little bit about my journey as I started fasting. If you are watching this episode through video, then you see the picture there of when I started on the left in 2019 and currently where I am today. It's a couple of months uh, ago that I took that photo there on the right. So for me, <clears throat> it was about the year 2018. And I looked up and I was 250 pounds. Now, I'd always been an athlete. I'd always been active growing up and never really thought about consciously losing weight. And so I never, I never had a problem with weight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me. Grab a little water here. <coughs> All right. <coughs> All right. Yeah, something was in my throat there. I'm actually uh, on a fast right now. Uh, this is day number ten, and uh, it's a water-only fast. And um, today was a bit sluggish getting up. And uh, that happens. You know, you have a burst of energy. And then you have really, really, really sluggish times uh, when you're fasting. For me, uh, when I fast on an extended fast, if I do anything over, you know, about a week or so, I start to feel these kind of ups and downs. So this morning when I rose, um, I was a bit sluggish. I did a lot of breath work uh, this morning to uh, center myself and and to uh, you know get get myself uh, ready for the day. And um, like I said, it happens. Um, from the times that I've been doing extended fast, what I've noticed is about day twelve, about day twelve, day thirteen is when things kick really in high gear for me. Uh, the mental clarity is uh, spot on. The energy spot on. Uh, just everything seems to be uh, working inside of me harmonically. So I got two more days to get to day 12. So anyways, uh, when I started 
really getting into fasting was um, I was on a health journey already. Like I said, in 2018, I looked up and I was 250 pounds. I was at the highest weight that I had ever been. And um, I carry my weight a bit different than I guess other obese people would carry their weight because uh, no one around me, you know, was telling me, hey, you know, like you're getting pretty fat. Like no one said that. So um, my weight carries a little, a little bit different because like I said, I've always been an athlete. But when I looked at myself in the mirror, I didn't like what I saw. So, you know, I started to um, alter and make changes uh, to my nutrition. Now, during that time, uh, I was a vegetarian. In fact, I was a vegan. Um, and I would always, you know, joke and, and share when I'm sharing this story. I would always say I was the fattest vegan that I ever knew. And that's, that's true. You know, some people think just because you're vegan that you're this skinny, you know, anorexic type individual. And that's, that's not necessarily true if you're not eating, uh, consuming uh, plant-based and the right types of, uh, you know, vegan foods um, that, are, that are healthy. Because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of vegan stuff out there nowadays. It's processed and, you know, these food manufacturers are just jumping on the bandwagon to make the money from the vegan craze. They weren't necessarily, from the onset of starting their business, they weren't necessarily in it for health and to help humanity. It's all about the, the dollar for them. So anyway, back to my story. 2019, um, towards the uh, last quarter of 2019, I started doing a lot of research around water fasting because I just wanted to knock a big chunk of weight off. Um, again, I had started you know, eating healthier wasn't quite working out at that point, uh, diligently, but again, you know, did some research on water fasting. I said, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to see how it works for me. And so September 2nd, 2019, I embarked on what became a 33 day water fast. And uh, prior to that, my longest fast, water fast, had been only three days. I couldn't get myself over three days. That was kind of like my ceiling. And uh, when I started this particular fast, I didn't know how many days I would do. I just wanted to get over three days. So once I got, o got over three days, about day five, day seven, I was, I was feeling pretty good. I was excited and I wanted to push myself further. So I would tell myself, all right, let's just get through another week. Uh, then we got through another week, day 14. Like I said, day 12, I started feeling really, really good. In fact, um, day 12, uh, my grandmother came to me and my grandmother had, had uh, transitioned uh, about three years now, close to three years now. Uh, but, but she came to me um, in a, um, I was in a, I was awake. Uh, this was not a dream. <clears throat> I was awake and conscious, uh, but I was, I was in a meditative state and my grandmother came to me and, um, I actually did a video on YouTube about the experience on my YouTube channel. If you care to, uh, take a look at it. Um, and we had a conversation, very loving conversation. She gave me some words of encouragement, some things that I've been dealing with mentally um, around family. And uh, that was that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. And uh, I said, wow, you know, if I can get this clarity and um, this insight like this that I've never experienced before just by simply not eating, not, you know, consuming food. Like this is the best drug I've ever had. And I've never had drugs. If you want to call marijuana a drug, then yeah. But anything outside of that, no. <clears throat> um, so anyways, that was that. I got to day 12, feeling really good. Day 14, I said, okay, wow, you know, I'm feeling good. Um, in fact, um, I did a mountain hike during that time I felt so good and uh, mind you I hadn't been working out or anything 
you know, at this point. So I said, let me push this thing out another week, see if we can get to 21 days. There, you know, we pushed it 21 days. I was like, man, the scale was looking good. I was feeling good. Um, the inflammation in my knees had dissipated. Um, I had started doing some light, you know, workouts here and there. And I said, let me, let me push it to 30 days. You know, 30 is a round, you know, number. Got to 30 days, um, pushed it out to about 33 days. And um, that experience led me down a journey, a health journey that is a part of my lifestyle now. Um, it is a part of my lifestyle now because the the weight that I dropped, I went from, I want to say I was, um, I have it documented, but um, on, on my YouTube channel, but I want to say uh, my, my waist was about 40 inches at that point. My highest waist was 44 inches. Uh, but at this point, it was 40 when I started to fast, and then it went to 34. Yeah, it went to 34, 36. You'll have to look on my YouTube channel to, to make sure that I'm correct on that. At the time, I did not have a scale, so I didn't uh, weigh myself. But I can tell you this, after that fast, people around me, you know, friends, family, they were like, wow, like, what did you do you know and I was like eh, I just didn't eat for 30 days people were like what you didn't eat for 30 days yeah I didn't eat and they're like why wow, you could have killed yourself you could have died and that was one of the things that was interesting to me um there's a group that I belong to and a lot of people in the group water fast and um because of of ignorance which is just you know not knowing because of ignorance and the way that um, the medical field um, wants to keep the masses of people in a sick state because the medical industry treats sickness. It does not help you to be healthy. It treats sickness. Um, so the information that's given, you know, um, on a collective is information that will discourage you from doing anything on your own without prescriptions, um, without medical advice and things like that, that will cure you, right? So uh, you have to understand the agenda of uh, these outfits. All right, so anyway, that's my story. And, um, you know, that's my journey. This episode is not going to uh, be any type of ed medical advice or anything like that. So I'm just going to be sharing with you uh, some research that um, I've come up with to support the idea of uh, the benefits of fasting. All right, so let's go to this first. Mm. All right, here we go. All right, this is um, coming from brainfacts.org. All of the uh, case studies that I go through, I will put the links to those case studies in the show notes so you can go back, verify, and uh, do your own research. So this um, case study is How Does Fasting Affect the Brain? This was written in uh, July 2018. And I will start to read. Maybe you skip a meal here and there to try to lose weight, or perhaps you abstain from eating in observance of a religious holiday. But what happens to your brain when you forego food? Mark Madsen, a neuroscientist at the National Institute on Aging and a professor at Johns Hopkins University, reveals the surprising brain benefits of fasting. What is fasting? The way we scientists who study fasting define it is not consuming food for a long enough period of time to elevate the levels of compounds called ketones. In the fed state, that is, when you're not fasting, glucose is the primary fuel used by cells, including neurons. Fasting depletes the liver stores of glucose, prompting fat cells to release fats. The fats travel to the liver where they're converted into ketones, 
which are essentially small pieces of fats that cells can use as energy source. This metabolic switch, going from using glucose to using ketones as an energy source, happens after about 10 to 14 hours of not consuming food, depending on how active you are. Exercise will accelerate the onset of the switch. <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink of water. Like I told you, I'm on uh, day 10 of a water fast currently. What I did notice um, when I did my long 30-day fast was um, that my voice, my, uh, my vocal cords would get a little weak. <clears throat> All right. There are different types of fasting regimens. In lab animals, the main regimen we use is alternate day fasting, where the rats or mice have no food for a 24-hour period, followed by a 24-hour period where they can eat and so on. Alternatively, you can restrict the amount of time animals have across the food to a four to six hour window so that they're fasting between 18 and 20 hours a day. In people, we've studied a fasting regimen called the 5-2 diet, where people eat normally for five days out of the week and then eat only about 500 calories on the other two days. And I'm not going to read every single piece of information in each of these. All right, so I do want to go here. Is there any evidence suggesting that people who fast have improved cognitive function? As of now, few studies have investigated the cognitive benefits of fasting in humans. We're in the middle of a study at the National Institute on Aging where we're taking people who are at risk of cognitive impairment because of their age and weight and randomly assigning them to either a 5-2 intermittent fasting diet or a control diet, which is just advice for healthy eating. Before starting the diet and then two months later, we're doing a battery of cognitive tests with a focus on various aspects of learning and memory. We're about halfway through the study now, but it's going to be a while before we publish the final results. Now, um, again, this was written in 2018. There's been lots of peer-reviewed studies in science uh, backing fasting, and we're going to take a look at some of it now. A couple, um, <clears throat> couple of doctors that... I love their body of work around uh, the science and, and the medical facts. The benefits of fasting uh, is Dr. Goldhammer, um, Dr. Furman, and uh, Dr. Sanjeep. And you can find them. They've got uh, lectures and uh, different content on YouTube if you're interested in this. Now, this is... Um, actually an interview with uh, Dr. Goldhammer and this is coming from ncbi.nlm.nih.gov website and again I will put these links in the show notes but this is the US National Library of Medicine National Institute of Health and I won't read all of this because this is uh, him going back and forth um, in, an, in an interview with the uh, Integrative Medicine and Clinicals uh, Journey IMCJ so anyway, uh, let me give you a little background here on Goldhammer. Um, Alan Goldhammer is the founder and education director of True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California. Under his guidance, the center has supervised FAST for thousands of patients and grown into one of the premier training facilities for doctors wishing to gain certification in the supervision of therapeutic fasting. Dr. Goldhammer is on the faculty of Bastyr University in Seattle, Washington, where he teaches a course on clinical fasting. He's a primary investigator in two published landmark studies that demonstrate the benefits of water-only fasting. He's the author of The Health-Promoting Cookbook and co-author of The Pleasure Trap, Mastering the Hidden Force That Undermines Health and Happiness. All right. Um, IMCJ, their question to him is, what made you interested in pursuing the effects of fasting? Dr. Goldhammer, I got started very young, about 16 actually. I wanted to be a better basketball player than my friend, Doug Lyle, who currently is a director of research and a clinical psychologist at True North Health Center. We grew up together and he could always beat me in basketball. I was looking for an edge. So I started reading and came across the books on natural hygiene by Herbert Shelton, ND, and others. 
and it made a lot of sense. Ultimately, I met Alec Burton, who specialized in fasting supervision. He was the president of the Pacific College of Osteopathic Medicine. After I graduated from Chiropractic College of Western States, I went to Australia, attended Pacific College, and did an internship with Dr. Burton. We're going to have to cut this short. My voice is uh, leaving me. <clears throat> Let me get to... Yeah, let's get to... Okay, so the interview is asking... Uh, how does it promote, uh, how to promote health? And Dr. Goldhammer states, um, we've been able to document the effect on cardiovascular disease. We've published a paper in the Journal of Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics, medically supervised water only fasting and the treatment of hypertension. The cohort, including 174 consecutive patients with hypertension, 174 people achieving blood pressure low enough to eliminate medication, and the largest effect sizes that have ever been shown in treating high blood pressure in humans with an average drop of 60 points in stage 3 hypertension, independent of the medication effects. These people were all non-medicated at the end of treatment, and so they dropped 60 points plus whatever effect medication might have been having on them prior to withdrawal. We subsequently published a second paper in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine working at borderline hypertension on these people who had blood pressure that was high enough to increase the risk of death, but not enough to justify medication. The effect sizes in this study were proportional to those of the JMPT article. We did a third paper where we looked at cost effectiveness. We had become a fully covered medical benefit for California's most powerful labor union, International Union of Civil Engineers Local 3. We took 30 consecutive union admissions and looked at their cost of medical care in total prior to and after this intervention. They were able to reduce the cost of medical care more than the cost of the program in the first year. So we continued that for a number of years. And another summary paper appeared in the JACM looking for that data. For people who are interested, all of those papers are available on our website at truenorthhealth.com. So um, what he's talking about here is uh, just with simple water fasting, uh, allowing your temple, allowing your body to recalibrate itself and work in, in, at an optimal state, which it was designed to do. And we screw that up with bad diet, bad thoughts, and all that kind of stuff, bad environment. But um, he's talking about here how the uh, cost, the medical cost for each of these participants uh, was drastically reduced because he got rid of meds, he got rid of going to the doctor every week, and all of these different types of things. All right. All right, so let me move on to the next two articles, and then I'm going to have to end this episode because my voice is leaving. All right, so um, this article or case study also comes from uh, the same National Library of Medicine, and um, title is, take a sip of water. <clears throat> is fasting safe? Um a chart review of adverse events during medically supervised water-only fasting. <clears throat> Background. Evidence suggests that fasting during which only water is consumed results in potentially health-promoting physiological effects. However, peer-reviewed research assessing the safety of water-only fasting is lacking. To address this, we conducted a chart review to describe adverse events that occur occurred <laughs> during medically supervised water-only fasting. Methods, electronic charts from patient visits to a residential medical facility from 2006-2011 were reviewed. Patients were at least 21 years of age and water-only fasted for over two consecutive days with a refeeding period equal to half of the fast length were included. Out of 200 I'm sorry, out of 2,539 charts, 768 visits met our inclusion and exclusion criteria. AEs were abstracted from chart notes and classified according to CTCAE and MEDDRA terminology. Descriptive analysis of AEs is reported. The results. During the protocol period, the highest grade AE in 555 visits was a grade 2 event or lower. 
In 212 visits, it was a grade three event. In one visit, it was a grade four event, and there were no grade five events. There were two visits with a serious adverse event. The majority of AEs identified were mild in nature and known reactions to fasting. Conclusion. To our knowledge, this is the most comprehensive analysis of AEs experienced during medically supervised water-only fasting conducted to date. Overall, our data indicate that the majority of AEs <coughs> experienced were mild to moderate and known reactions to fasting. This suggests that the protocol used in this study can be safely implemented in a medical setting with minimal risk of the SAE. I believe this study is for uh, other doctors out there that want to um, offer um, supervised extended fast for their patients. Um, so you can read and review um, all of this as well. The link will be in the show notes. And then my last case study is coming from um, Harvard Health. <clears throat> and this is intermittent fasting, surprising update. The reason why I want to talk about intermittent fasting is because some people think, um, like when I tell people I do water only fast, they're thinking, you know, because they come from uh, a uh, habit of eating, you know, three to six times a day, and like, oh my God, I can't do water fasting at all. So there is something called intermittent fasting. And since I started my 30 day uh, fast, like when I started back in 2019 and I did that, I went to intermittent fasting, right? So and intermittent fasting for me is just one meal a day. So I have a one hour window where I eat and I eat vegan foods. So lots of beans, uh, lots of green leafy vegetables, you know, lots of fruits, uh, lots of nuts, lots of whole grains. That's, that's what I consume within that one hour time frame. So 23 hours out of each day, my body is, is in a state of fasting. So, you know, I'm producing more ketones uh, 23 hours a day. I'm burning uh, more fat. I'm uh, upgrading uh, my brain. I'm upgrading my neurons um, on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And now that I've been doing it so long, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not hungry like the other 23 hours. I'm not, I'm not hungry, you know, because my body is healing itself. And it's just like a regeneration machine. <laughs> it really is. So anyways, let's read through uh, some of this last article here. This article was written uh, February 10, 2020 by Monique Tello, who's an MD, MPH, and the contributor to uh, Health Harvard. There's a ton of incredibly promising intermittent fasting research done on fat rats. They lose weight, their blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugars improve, but they're rats. Studies in humans almost across the board have shown that intermittent fasting is safe and incredibly effective, but really no more effective than any other diet. In addition, many people find it difficult to fast. But a growing body of research suggests that the timing of the fast is key and can make IF, IF means intermittent fasting, all right, so I'll just say IF, a more realistic, sustainable, and effective approach for weight loss as well as for diabetes prevention. All right. The backstory on intermittent fasting. IF was a, IF as a weight loss approach has been around in various forms for ages, but was highly popularized in 2012 by BBC broadcast journalist Dr. Michael Mosley's TV documentary, Eat Fast, Live Longer, and the book, The Fast Diet, followed by journalist Kate Harrison's book, The 5-2 Diet, based on our own experience and subsequently uh, by Dr. Jason Fong's 2016 bestseller, The Obesity Code. I have generated a steady positive buzz as anecdotes of its effectiveness proliferated. <clears throat> as a lifestyle-leaning research doctor, I needed to understand the science. The Obesity Code seemed the most evidence-based summary resource and loved it. 
Fong successfully combines plenty of research, his clinical experience, and sensible nutrition advice, and also addresses the socioeconomic forces conspiring to make us fat. He's very clear that we should eat more fruits and veggies, fiber, healthy protein and fats, and avoid sugar, refined grains, processed foods, and for God's sakes, stop snacking. Check, check, check. I agree. The only part that was still questionable in my mind was the intermittent fasting part. Intermittent fasting can help weight loss. IF makes intuitive sense. The food we eat is broken down by enzymes in our gut and eventually ends up as molecules in our bloodstream. Carbohydrates, particularly sugars and refined grains, think white flour and rice, are quickly broken down into sugar, which our cells use for energy. If our cells don't use it all, we store it in our fat cells as well as fat. But sugar can only enter our cells with insulin, a hormone made in the pancreas. Insulin brings sugar into the fat cells and keeps it there. Between meals, as long as we don't snack, our insulin levels will go down and our fat cells can then release their stored sugar to be used as energy. We lose weight if we let our insulin levels go down. The entire idea of IF is to allow the insulin levels to go down far enough and for long enough that we burn off our fat. So um, this is going through, uh, this is really a great article. So again, I'm going to have the link in the show notes. But let me just kind of end this episode with this where she talks about four ways to use this information for better health. Number one, avoid sugars and refined grains. Instead, eat fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, whole grains, uh, lean proteins, and healthy fats. Number two, let your body burn fat between meals. Don't snack. Be active throughout your day. Build muscle tone. That means you got to exercise. Number three, consider a simple form of intermittent fasting. Limit the hours of the day when you eat. and For the best effect, make it early in the day between 7 and 3 or even 10 to 6, but definitely not in the evening before bed. Yeah, that's one of the things that I was able to shift as well. Like uh, the one meal that I have, I normally have that meal before like 7, the, at the absolute latest 8 p.m., right? Um, so yeah, that's a that's a big thing. You could really just, um, you know, if this is something you want to incorporate in your life, I say, you know, you could start with just intermittent fasting if you don't want to go, you know, extreme and do a water fast or, or what have you. But you can just start with intermittent fasting. Just cut your meals down to one meal a day. And you don't have to be vegan. You know, you can still eat your meat if that's your thing. Uh, but just cut your meal down to one meal a day. Keep it, you know, maybe seven, eight o'clock at the latest where you have that meal and make it be something uh, nutritious, obviously. You know, you want your protein, you want your veggies, you want your fruits, things like that. And then just kind of see how, how that goes and uh, what that does for you. Some of my clients, um, they will come to me and they want to do a water fast and they're just, they're so not ready for a, a complete water fast. So I will start them on intermittent fasting, right? So I will start them on just cutting their meals down to one meal a day. And we may do that for 14 to 30 days and measure the results. And then once we cut the meals down, so if you go from like, you know, eating three meals a day to one meal a day, right? What happens is um, you're gonna naturally lose weight. Um, you're going to uh, naturally have uh, better brain cognition, right? Because you're fasting pretty much 23 hours of the day and uh, you're getting yourself prepared for if you want to go to a water only fast or a green smoothie fast or something like that. You're getting your body, your mind and everything prepared for that to take place and you'd be successful with, with that. So I would never take a person from like eating three to five meals a day to a water fast, you know what I'm saying? So it just kind of sets them up for failure. It's a gradual process. All right, so the last thing here um, of our four ways is to avoid snacking or eating at nighttime, right? Those midnight snacks, obviously, you know, they've got to go, right? So um, that is it. I hope you found insight in this episode. What I can tell you is, um, you know, I'll be fasting for the rest, the rest of my time on earth. It is um, a great, great mental drug. 
and uh, it makes me feel very light. It makes me um, feel very present. Um, as you know, I blend you know my meditation with my fasting as well. So you know, if this is something that you want to embark upon, I would tell you number one, get present. Um, number two is to see the end goal in mind, right? If you're doing it for weight loss, if you're doing it for um, uh, better mental clarity, um, or if, you, if you're doing it just to uh, give yourself like, like an energy booster. Visualize that end goal in your mind, right? In uh, the days that you're doing the fast, meditate on that end goal. It helps. It absolutely helps. So that's it for this episode. If you have questions or comments, uh, look in the show notes for the link to the blog. I would love to uh, hear your comments and uh, love to uh, take your questions. All right. Peace and unconditional love to you. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.